Hi, it's time for a chime video. Today we have something truly unique. We have a mystery new tone chime. This chime was sent in by a fellow named Jordan. Jordan works for Mark Brown Construction near Lakeland, Florida. And Jordan is the project manager. They're renovating and remodeling a little 1950s Florida bungalow house. And this is the door chime from that house. And it hasn't worked as long as anyone can remember. He got a hold of me and wanted to know if I could fix it. And I said, probably. And he sent me some pictures of it. It was not like any new tone chime that I had ever seen before. This is the base for a two note long tube chime. And these are the two tubes that go along with it. This is truly a mystery chime. Now, first off, the house was built in 1950. Is this a 1950s chime? I don't think so. I think this is much earlier than that because this has a very small form factor. This is literally only, let's see, it is only not quite five inches square. It has this sort of ivory painted finish on the base. And this is not a 1950s color. This is more of a late 1930s, early 1940s new tone color. In the 1950s, things were mostly black. Other aspects of how this is made don't really relate to the 1950s. It's really more of a pre-war chime. So is it possible that the house was built in 1950 and some new tone person had one of these on the shelf and been hanging around since before World War II? Sure, why not? Old stuff hangs around for a long time and it's a very nice chime. I don't know what the cover looks like. Jordan promised that after he puts it back up in the customer's house, he would send me a picture of it with the cover in place. Based on his pictures, this is not nearly as big as I thought it was going to be. I thought the base would have been a much bigger base because in the 1950s, everything got bigger. So this is a two note, two door chime. Front door has two notes, rear door has a single note. It also has an accent light right here with a little pull chain switch to turn the accent light on and off. Is this totally unique and, and never seen anything like this before? No, not really. It's a variation on a two note chime base designed for long tubes instead of bars or something like that. But it uses sort of standard new tone designs from back in those days. And this base assembly is very much like other pre-war chimes that I have made videos about. So no, it's not that. This is not what makes it a mystery chime. This is not what makes it terribly unique in any way. It really all has to do with the tube. So let's put this out of the way, keep it safe. And before I show you about the tubes, let's talk about these for a second. So a long time ago, maybe 15, 20 years ago, I was speaking with someone about a new tone chime and talking about chimes in general because yes, there are people that know a lot about chimes and are interested in chimes. And that fellow was telling me about a new tone chime where the tubes were dramatically different than any other chime I had ever heard about. Most new tone brass tubes, and I'm gonna flip this around, we're looking at the bottom, are very much like this. It's a hollow brass tube. It's made out of instrument quality brass tubing. It has an open end. Maybe it has holes drilled across it and there's a hanger cord. Some of them have solid plugs that go in and the hanger cord comes out of a hole in the middle of the solid plug. Made hung in a variety of different ways, but basically it's a hollow brass tube. And when the plunger pops out of the chime base, it strikes the tube like this although it doesn't go thud because I'm holding on to it right now, but it hits the tube like this and that creates the note for the chime. These tubes are not like the standard new tone tube. These tubes are totally different. These tubes are the type of tubes that, that the fellow I was talking to on the phone was telling me about. And at that point, I was sort of passing it off. I'm hiding it right now so you can't see it. I was sort of passing off his comments as this guy's got it confused with something else or he's not clear on what he's talking about because it's something I've never seen before. And it's something I've never seen in real life. I've never seen it in any advertisements. It's not something that's common at all. It's difficult because I can't find out any real information about them other than having a set in my shop right now. And what makes these tubes different are these metal rods. These metal rods are affixed into the top of each tube, which you can see here. 
and they have hanger cords that go through holes that were drilled through the metal rod. So the tube is hung on the cord and the plunger, when it pops out of the chime solenoid, strikes the metal rod and that's what generates the note from the tube. This is the only time I've ever seen this. I've only ever heard about it once before from the fellow I was talking to on the phone and I thought he doesn't know what he's talking about. There is no such chime that Newton made ever like that, but apparently there is. Why were they made like this? I don't have any idea. Did they make this design for lots of chimes? I don't think so because I have pages from chime advertisements and out of wholesale catalogs and things like that and there's nothing like this. There's no model number on the chime base. In fact, chime base is a pretty traditional new tone chime base and it says here stamped into the metal which you may or may not be able to read because it's fairly faint. It actually says Newtone trademark chime door signal Newtone Chimes Incorporated Cincinnati Ohio and that's very much like the stamp that was used on a lot of chime bases all the way up through yeah, it was into the late 50s and early 60s so it's not a unique mark at all I don't know where this chime actually fits into the line of chimes I also don't know what model it is there is a label here on the top which is really hard to read I'll hold it up there might be able to get a glimpse of it. And what it says is, first thing it says, do not oil with an exclamation mark. Now, where have we heard that before? Oh, probably here. We are not responsible for performance of this chime if you oil any part of the mechanism. Ooh, who else has said that? If the striker becomes sticky, use ordinary steel wool to take dust off the metal plunger. If a louder tone is needed, order new tone B10A transformer, which I assume has more watts, which we'll talk about later on in this video. I also am not sure which bulb this is supposed to use. This is the bulb that came with it. It's good, it works. There are no markings on the base of the bulb, so I'm not sure. It's a small threaded miniature lamp. It would be something that probably would be designed to work on maybe 20 to 24 volts because if it's a 16 volt chime, which it is, then you would want a bulb that was rated at a higher voltage than the supply so that it lasts for a really long time. It probably puts out somewhere between two and four watts would be my guess. And Jordan was also kind enough to send this is the original Newtone transformer that came with it. It was installed in the lady's house and he took it down with the chime when he sent it to me. It says 16 volt chime Newtone incorporated transformer 10VA. 10VA is 10 watts made in the USA. On the back it says it's catalog number 1010B. Zero? Wait, hold on. Yes, 1010B. So I might be able to track down the age of the transformer, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the age of the chime itself because it might have been an old stock chime that some dealer had on his shelf and the transformer was made, it was newer because you know, transformers get sold all the time. So I don't know. It was an interesting chime in its configuration. Servicing it was fairly straightforward. The other thing that makes me think it's an early chime is that it has wooden tips and all pre-war Newtone chimes have wooden tips. After World War II, the eight note chimes that they made in 1947, 48, and 49 had what were essentially felt or leather tips. It's hard to tell what it is at this point because they're so old. And after that, they all became plastic tips. So it has wooden tips on the plungers it was really mostly a matter of cleaning the brass tubes in the solenoids, cleaning the plungers thoroughly, reaffixing the springs so they don't pop off any longer because that was a problem because the coil is going to get stretched out. I had to replace the pull chain switch. This is the original one because it's raggedy and it doesn't actually work anymore. You can pull the chain, but it doesn't switch on and off. It's just off all the time, so it's broken internally. This is a fairly easy switch. I just went down to our local Ace Hardware and bought a pull chain switch. It's almost identical in size and configuration. Fits in very nicely. I chose the one with the brass nut and the brass pull chain on it because I thought it went better with the brass tubes. These are your electrical connections here 
for your transformer front and rear and this gets wired up you do have to wire up one the one loose lead of the pull chain switch to the other side of the transformer for power so you can turn the light on and off and other than that it's a pretty standard two note chime base nothing really remarkable about it the hanger for the cords on the tubes is different because they're spaced further apart they're very wide this way and of course they have the little notches in it so you can move the tubes in and out away and closer to the plungers and that helps you adjust how the chime works but we'll talk about that at the end and in this particular one there is a hanger right here in the center with a little knurled nut that you can move in and out uh, this again this is sort of a pre-war feature a lot of new tone three and eight note chimes the tube hangers are a threaded metal screw with this little neural nut thing to hang the tubes on and actually this particular chime actually came with a third tube this is the center tube it has a standard configuration which i told you about in the beginning where it's a hollow brass tube it has holes drilled through it and it has a hanger cord right here and that hangs on the little neural nut the center tube is just decoration it, it doesn't work in any way it doesn't get struck it's just to make the chime look fancier so let me go ahead and take all of this and i'm going to set it up on our testing jig and wire it up and let's see if you think it sounds as nice as i do now that we know all about our mystery chime let's go ahead and see what it sounds like because at the end of the day, with any door chime repair, it really comes down to what does it sound like. So let's go ahead and give it a go. And then I'll talk a little bit about what I did to ensure that it sounds, I think, like what it would have sounded like when it was brand new. So first, here's the replacement switch that I installed for the accent light, which is here. This will work better, actually, if I turn the power on. All right, the power is now on. So if we pull the chain, our accent light works. I left the chain that I got with the switch really, really, really long because I don't know what the customer has in mind for it. And it's a simple beaded chain, so it's easy enough to snip it off and move the little bell end up on it if you want to make it shorter. So I'll just leave it long for right now. The tubes are hung correctly. So let's go ahead and give it a ring. I have it set up for both doors. You have front door, which is two notes, and rear door, which is a single note. And I see what we get first. So let's go ahead and give it a ring. Sounds good. It resonates very nicely. You can hear it resonate for a long period of time. Let's go ahead and do the front door, which is two notes. And I believe that sounds very nice also. On these types of chimes, only the outer tubes are the ones that are active that make the notes. The center tube is just for decoration. It makes it fancier. And sometimes back in the days, this is a two note long tube chime. The third tube in the center was an optional extra tube. If you spend another two or three dollars, you could get a third tube for it and make it look fancier than the one in your neighbor's house. So what did I do to ensure that it would sound correct? Well, there was a lot of the technical term would be fiddling around with it to make it sound the way I think it should. First, I just decided to keep the original hanger cords, which are the cord, the cord here and the cord here, because it's a heavier cord than is what is typical, and it's in good shape, and they're exactly the right length. The other thing I did was to add some felt bumpers to the rods that come out of the top of the tubes to soften the strike from the metal plungers. In many new tone two note chimes, for the second door or the rear door, which is only a single note, the plunger pops out to the right and strikes the tube. And then when you release the button, the spring makes it pop back to the left. And there is this metal stop right here which is part of the base of the chime and on almost all of those types of chimes there will be a felt bumper or a felt pad on the metal bracket 
because you don't want the metal end of the plunger hitting the metal bracket because then it makes sort of a clunk sound and you would hear that in the house and that wouldn't be very desirable. As we talked about, the plungers, because this is old school, they have wooden tips. Wooden tips give chimes a certain tonal quality. It's different than ones with plastic tip. Tip material makes a difference is what it comes down to. When the front door plunger, which is two notes, is energized, it pops out to the right and strikes the metal rod that comes out of the tube to make the first note. But then when you release it, it works the same as the rear door where the metal plunger moves to the left because of the force of the spring and has to hit the second rod. When it would do that, it didn't sound proper because it sounded, as Newton would have said, it sounded kind of jangly. It didn't sound right because you have a metal plunger hitting the metal rod and that doesn't give you the type of tonal quality that you would expect. So I decided to take a page out of older Newtone chimes that I've seen that these are more specifically eight note bar chimes. And on some eight note bar chimes, there will be small felt pads on the backs of the tone bars where the plungers, the plastic tipped plungers, hit the tone bars. And the only reason that you would do that would be to create a different tonal quality for that particular chime. So there is a precedent for felt pads. So I decided that that may be a good way to go. So what I use, these are little round felt pads, the type you buy at the local home improvement store or hardware store that you put on the corners of your cabinet doors so when you close the door, the wood doesn't bang on the wooden frame, it bangs on, it closes on the felt pad and that softens the way it sounds when it closes. So I use those types of felt pads the way they come from the store, they're much, much too thick. So I very carefully used a razor blade and shaved them down to a little less than half of their original thickness because you don't want to dampen the sound too much just to get rid of the jangliness of the metal plunger hitting the metal rod. And as I played around with it, rear door, front door, It seemed to mellow out the sound, it got rid of the jangly sound, and it sounds the way I would expect it to. Once I got all of this sorted out and I was happy with it, then I needed to figure out, is it loud enough? Now there is no volume adjustment per se on a chime like this. It all has to do with the amount of power the transformer can provide. Now the transformer, which the Jordan, the contractor, sent with the chime, is the original transformer, and it's a 16 volt, 10 watt, or 10 VA transformer, which is not very big. With that one, I was concerned that it might not strike hard enough to be able to make sure that you can hear it inside the little Florida bun bungalow house. So then I decided I would try a larger transformer. So I tried it with a 16 volt, 30 VA transformer or 30 watts, which is same voltage, but three times the power reserve. And that simply made the plungers strike way too hard. And you would think maybe, well, if they strike way too hard, you can move the tubes out further on their adjustments, further away from the plungers, so it's not striking as hard. But the problem with that thinking was, if you move the left-hand tube out away, further away from the plunger, then the plunger, when the spring pushes it back to the left, it pushes it out too far, and the metal of the plunger is too far outside the electromagnetic field of the coil, and it doesn't want to, it'll operate once, but then it won't operate again, because basically it's kind of hanging out, and that's not good. So that didn't work out very well either. Then I decided to try sort of a compromise in between the original one and my 30 watt transformer, and I tried a new tone 16 volt 15 watt transformer, or 15 VA. Even that, I think, was too powerful for it because what you have to consider is the amount of force of the plungers has everything to do with the amount of watts that the transformer can produce. If you have more watts, 
The watts don't force themselves into it, but the coils will draw more watts if they're there and they're available. It basically, it doesn't need that. Newtone apparently knew what they were doing when they supplied it with a 10 watt transformer because that's more than enough. The transformer is not super huge. 10 watts is not a lot. It has to do with the accent light. If I ring this with the light on, it sounds like that. If we turn the light off and ring it again, you may not be able to hear the difference, but it does strike somewhat harder. I can tell the difference because I'm listening very carefully and I'm actually here and you're actually watching a recording. The light bulb uses up some of the watts when it's lit up. If you only have 10 watts to start with, and the light bulb is may, maybe using two or three of those watts, you only have like seven-ish watts left. And the number of watts is not carved in stone. It varies lots of different factors. But I think Newtone knew what they were doing when they figured all of this out because in the end, it works really well. And I know I sent Jordan an abbreviated version of a testing video so he could see it. He seemed to be very happy with it and he thought his customer would be very happy with it also. So that's it. That's the saga of our mystery Newtone two note long tube door chime. I hope you found this interesting and perhaps for someone it will be helpful. If it is, give it a thumbs up on YouTube because that helps us a lot. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell, and when you click on the bell, click on it to receive all notifications, and every time we post a new video, you'll get a notification, and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.